Okay, today we are going to play around with editing our template, our portfolio template, so that we can jazz it up. The first thing I'm doing here in Dreamweaver is this. I've set up a folder called Portfolio. That way I can tuck any images and or backup copies of the portfolio into that. And indeed, if I double click and open this up, I can see that while this portfolio is certainly very functional, it's not very impressive looking. So eventually I'm going to rename that. I want to go out and here I am on the web at our Dreamweaver outline space. And I want to go ahead and grab a different template. I'm going to click on Portfolio Templates. Now if I take a look here, I've got this thing called Layout Pink. Let me drag that in here. That's what that little guy looks like. And I have a Layout Green and that's what that guy looks like. Now both of these templates are relatively similar in terms of layout and style but in terms of function I'm going to go ahead and work with the layout pink only because that one has a few other things in there that I want to play with. So I can come over here where it says layout to pink zip and I can go ahead and click on download on that. Now the reason I'm going to choose to do that Sorry, I am here in Firefox and I have to right click on it and save target as. I want to go ahead and save this directly to my thumb drive so that's off of my computer and I'm going to navigate to my thumb drive and I'm going to go into my name folder and click on save. Now I really do not need to keep this site open. I'm going to go ahead and minimize it just in case. But here we are back in Dreamweaver and in fact here's that zip file. Now again I don't need, in fact I cannot leave it as a, as a dot .zip. I have to rename that file extension to be .html. The reason why I'm using .html or rather a zip file on that website is so that when the file is downloaded everything is intact. So I've renamed the extension to be .html and this is what it looks like. Now notice this doesn't have the images that you saw on the original. Let me bring that right back up again. If I had wanted these images intact I would have had to have downloaded those images here and here. I would have had to have saved them in an images folder and then that would have been fine. However, I'm not going to use those images anyway, so I'm not going to worry about grabbing them. The one thing I do want to do, though, is, again, this is my original portfolio. I want to preserve that, but at the same time, this Layout 2 Pink is going to become my new portfolio. So I'm going to write, I'm going to click on my original index and name it index.org.html. Now, truth is, you can name it anything you want, but I'm using the naming convention of org in there so that I can recognize it very quickly. I'm going to drag and drop that into my portfolio folder because I don't want it out here where it might confuse me, and I'm going to rename this file to be index. So now I have this new piece. If you have created hyperlinks between your midterm and or final, things like that, you're going to have to recreate those. Alternately, you could go back to the original and start applying all of these other choices. But for my sake, I think it's, it's easier for me to start with this template and relink those pieces at a later point. Now, I do want to take a look here. First of all, I can see that the entire page is um, set inside a container here. Sometimes we call that a wrapper. I want to note that so that later on I can manipulate that. And if I'm clicked into this area up here, I can see that I'm in a box called a header. And inside that box is another box called heading. I'm going to want to keep my head around that. Here, this is a, a box called content top. I can see that down here. And then there are a variety of things such as this which is a box called Category Head, etc. 
So I do want to hang on to those notions as I'm working my way through this because I'm going to need those to manipulate it. Now the first thing I can do is I can go ahead and click into this particular box and I can see that it is the header box. I can come over to my CSS panel, expand this out a little bit and find my header box information. And indeed I can see that it's got this kind of grayish background. It's already got a background image, but this is an image that I don't have downloaded locally, therefore that's why it's not showing. So I can see that there are some various attributes here, but that's going to be the first thing I want to change. I want to actually insert a different background image here. Now I could insert it as a straightforward image and then float it left or right, but quite frankly that's even more painful than just inserting it as an image. So I'm going to take the easy route and I'm just going to come in over here. Again, I'm clicked onto my header because that's where I want to affect change. Click on my pencil and then I'm going to click for a new background and I already have saved the images that I want to play with here and I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now I do not want this image to repeat so I'm going to choose no repeat because it would look just awkward if it were repeating all the way across the page there. And click OK and there it is. Now the rest of the block itself, again this is the header block, is still sitting as a gray and the reason why I see that gray is that this image just isn't big enough to cover the entire thing. So one of the things I might do is I might go ahead and change that background color to be white and there is the beginning of my new piece. Now the next thing I'm going to want to do is notice that as I've highlighted this, this is sitting in a container box called Heading. And once again, I can come over here to Heading and see that the color is black and that is the color of my text, the font size, weight, etc. here. Now, one of the things I'm going to want to do here is in order to move it off of this graphic that's sitting over here on the left hand side, I'm going to go ahead and highlight that. I'm on my div heading. Truth is I don't need to highlight it. I more importantly need to be clicked into the heading over here. I'm going to take my pencil and edit that rule and this time I'm going to go to box and float that to the right. And so therefore it jumps that content to the right and gives the illusion that it's away from this particular graphic. It actually is away from the graphic. It's not even an illusion.